Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dota Show episode 23. Today it is Learning with Lumi and this is going to be in-depth series. We're going to look at some a couple of pro replays and then uh, go from there. But before we do that, I want to catch up. Had my birthday, was it Saturday? Saturday or Sunday? Let me see. Saturday. Yes, had my birthday on Saturday, which was really, really fun. I turned 24, so I'm feeling like I'm really, really old. Yeah, a lot of people, you guys out there, you think I'm like 18 or... 13 or 16. I'm 24. Like, I'm old enough to have kids by Asian parent standard. Any case, I had a blast of a birthday. My friend took me out to eat and eat and eat. We went to lunch and then we went to like a snack thing and then we went to ice cream. I'll talk about ice cream later. Right? It's my big tangent off about ice cream. And then we had more. We had dinner and then we went out for boba. It was nothing but eating. I feel I felt very bloated that day. Also, my parents yeah, gave me a smartphone. And the reason this is so important for me is I never ever had a smartphone. Like I live in the freaking Mesopotamia era, age, ancient Greece, whatever that era is, I lived there. I mean, I have a telephone, I have a, a cell phone, but I never had like a smartphone with apps and everything. I didn't even have texting. That's how far of a stone age I was in. There's there's all these girls that reject me. They're like, I text you. Why? You know, why? I was like, I showed up and waited for you at the restaurant for 30 minutes. And she's like, I text, I text you. I'm like, bitch, come on. I, you know I got like, no text. Call me. So next time when girls reject me, they could now text me to do so. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. But yes, now I have texting. Also, because I have texting and a smart plan and with all those like minutes and all that stuff, and now we'll actually be using Twitter and try to post interesting things. So I know a lot of you guys follow me on Facebook. Um, I have a Twitter account as well, at Luminous Inverse, easy enough to remember. Uh, you guys feel free to follow me there. I know for sure, at Seattle, I'll be tweeting like crazy. It's like, oh my god, that's Milk! Oh my god, that's, you know, 820 or whoever, Chinese Pro, or... Yeah, I'm going to be tweeting a lot, quite a bit, and uh, that should be quite fun. I should quite. <laughs> Seems like the chat is having a good time as well. No girls reject Luminous. I wish. I wish. Alright, today's topic is going to be trilings, and trilings are not really in flavor, right? We, If you watch Dota 1, like back in 2010, 2011, trialing was the thing, right? You either have a trialing or you lose the game. Now in 2012, trialing is kind of like a taboo, it feels like. If you if you have a trialing, you better win that trialing huge or you're going to lose the game. So today... We're going to watch a couple of replays where trialing fails, right? They just flat out fail. Now, before I get into these replays, making sure that Dota 2 is ready to go. Yeah, before I get into these replays, I want to really talk about trialings because making sure that we're all on the same page because there's a couple of different kind of trialings and uh, I want us to start off on the same ground, same footing. Okay, so a trialing that you guys are very, very familiar with is like three heroes on the lane, right? Imagine you're Sven. Crystal Maiden and a Morphling with the Morphling on carry and the two supports as a support center and all that stuff. Now the two supports basically their job is to roam, to pull, to farm in the jungle and then stun and get you a couple kills. That's kind of their job. The carry is supposed to farm or help push towers, whatever the case, whatever the aim of the trialing is. Most trialings either either push towers, either either, they either push towers or they kill. Now this is the two very very important things you have to accomplish. As, as a trialing. Now the pseudo fake trialing I want to say is a trialing that you commonly see let's say a carry and a support in lane with a jungler coming out. So you have Enigma coming out of jungle, you have Prophet, Chan Enchantress, those are the uh, the more popular trialings. I don't even want to call them trialings because they're not really trialings. There's It's a jungler plus a dual lane in a sense. But for the sake of today's discussion I'll talk, I'll say, I'll call it at a 2.5 lane, right? It's a tri-lane or a 2.5 lane. It makes me easier to uh, refer to these. So, the reason that tri-lane isn't popular now, and it was popular way back when, 2010, 2011, is because Ice Frog gave a huge nerf stick to tri-lane. Um, the old tri-lane, when you get a kill, you get a lot more EXP. Nowadays, if you get a kill because Ice Frog reworked the experience formula, you get very, very little gold, very, very little EXP. Ice Frog wanted to encourage a little bit more solo killing, a little bit more roaming killing, and thus trialing kind of fell apart. 
Um, of course, some of the very, very powerful trialing heroes like Visage, Visage, however you want to pronounce that hero, he got a huge nerf as well. So trialing overall was just systematically taken apart. But trialing is still a very, very powerful strategy when done correctly. And you do see teams run this kind of strategy from time to time. And that is uh, a good transition for us to go into a game. Hopefully I can find the game right now and load it up. The first game today is going to be LGD. Is it going to be LGD? No, it's not going to be LGD. It's going to be Dare versus Tong Fu. Game number two. Here we go. Watch replay. All these replay, by the way, I'm getting it from Beyond the Summit World Tour, the tournament I'm currently broadcasting for. For $3.99, you get a whole bunch of replays, and all of my uh, the, the Learning with Lumi shows are all from here. I, I feel that if you have enough uh, replays for a show, then I feel like just uh, shows the quality of the tournament and uh, the replay that we're getting. Okay, so we're quickly... No, I do not want a broadcaster. I'm the broadcaster here. All right, let's quickly look at the ho heroes over here. We have Darius lineup. All right, we have a Lone Druid, Keeper of Light, Venomancer, Pugna, Undying versus this lineup. So you can quickly see here who has the actual trialing and who has the quote-unquote, you know, 2.5 lane, right? In this case, you have the Chen who is going to be jungler here. Here, you have no jungler. So you're going to have the legitimate trialing. And legitimate trialings are actually really, really... I don't want to say bad, but they're just really risky. If you don't win the trialing and if you don't win it quick, you, you actually just lose three heroes of EXP and farm. And that's not that's not where you want to be when you start out the game. What I mean by winning the trialing quick, I'll get into that later, but particularly you want to have a dominated advantage around, around minute three. Around minute three. If you don't have a big advantage around minute three, your trialing has already failed. Now, I don't even know why there's so many icons like this. Uh, Valve still has a lot of stuff to fix. But this is a trial lane they're watching. A Keeper of the Light and Dying and a Venomancer. Now on paper, they're like, yeah man, this is a great pushing trial lane. Once they get a really high level of Tombstone and once they get a couple of wards and then they have a Chakra Illuminate, yeah, they could just push out anything. And in fact, that's true. When you do have this level uh, when do you have this trialing sufficiently leveled, you are able to get into push down towers or win engagements. Unfortunately, that's kind of the big if, right? You have to get the EXP first. And right now they're level one and a half. And uh, well, they're not gonna get any EXP soon. Now they're not harassing Queen of Pain too much. Queen of Pain, I mean, she's taking some damage, but she's still getting farmed. Meanwhile, if you look at this 2.5 lane on the bottom, it's a Shrek and a Sand King. Chen coming out of jungle. This Silver is scared for his life at the moment. He can't even hang to get EXP in the tower. This tower is gonna be going down very, very quickly. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain, I mean, she's taking some damage, taking some harassment, but because of her blink, she could just survive, no big deal. You can see that she's de deviating from the standard Queen of Pain build. Standard Queen of Pain build is getting Shadow Strike at 1 and 3, but, you know, there's really no point of Shadow Strike against the Trialing, so he's going to get the AoE, and it's a spell that allows him to get a lot more kills later on. So the top Trialing is doing nothing at this point, literally nothing. Uh, Queen of Pain is going to hit level 3 very soon. Meanwhile, the 2.5 lane on the bottom is just going at it. This tower is going to go down. Glyph has been already used by the Radiant side. So, at this point, once this tower goes down, I'm going to quickly pause the game and pull out the Go Earn menu. Right? Queen of Pain having the rough time on the top lane is neck and neck in terms of farm against the carry in the top lane. Don't even talk about these. Queen of Pain has lasted how many creeps? Four creeps? Is that, is that Queen? No. Queen of Pain has lasted two creeps, and she's out farming these two heroes combined, right? When your trialing don't have a sufficient advantage, I said by level by minute three, perhaps minute two is more accurate timing in this game. If you don't ha if you don't claim yourself a very very powerful advantage, your trialing is screwed, and that's why we don't see legit trialings anymore because so many things could actually go wrong. Now that was just a monetary and level advantage that I've been mentioning. Also, if you think about it, suddenly with this tier 1 tower going down, we could see these heroes actually roaming very aggressively to go for ganking, right? Chen could just go back in the jungle and keep on farming. Sand King could, could go gank mid if he wanted to do so. And of course, Lestrap could just stay in here and, and keep on farming. Meanwhile, what can these guys do? Well, you can't really gank because you're level 2 and you have no gold for boots. Venomancer is level 1. How do you actually set up a gank? Meanwhile, Sand King, because of tower, has picked the boots, has smoke as well. 
And it looks like Feed is about to do what his name implies. Three range creeps, and the bam, how picks up first blood. This is a trialing against the solo Queen of Pain. Solo Queen of Pain not only does it not tower has not even sustained any damage. And got a first blood against the trialing. At this point in the game, I could just pause this replay and say, game's over, there's out of this, because they lost a bot lane, they lost a trialing or top lane flat out, and because they lost a bot lane, Tong Fu's coming for the gank on the mid. So effectively, there is losing three lanes at once, and really it's so damn hard to come back in this situation, almost impossible against a caliber team like Tong Fu. But the replay ain't over yet, so we're gonna watch you a little bit more because this gets really, really ugly and really, really fast. Hauk picks up first blood on the top lane and with the help of his tower uh, being claimed on the bot. Is that Treads coming in? No, just bottle and a boots. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. Three and a half minutes in. Oh, yeah. Three and a half minutes in. Let's check out how much gold we've earned. Queen of Pain is leading the chart, leading the entire game. In terms of farm, thanks to his teammates, Tower, thanks to that lucky first, but I don't want to call it lucky, perhaps we'll, uh, off the mistake of Venomancer. And look at how actively she's doing it in the lane, right? This is again, is, is again, it's a tri lane. She's constantly harassing Venomancer, setting up a gank on the mid lane. Are they going to get a kill on Moo? It's going to be close. They can't even get a kill on Moo. And I mean, you can't fall fun for, for not getting the kill there. He's trying his best to help his team out. And I really like him actually leaving the lane. I really like that. I'll, I'll talk about more uh, about leaving the lane in, in, in a later replay. But for now, this lane here, if you want to call it a lane, these two heroes here were actually doing nothing against the Queen of Pain. And Queen of Pain is going to just bounce back. She's higher level than in Dying now. Uh, she's high, definitely higher level than Goblin. Goblin is taking some pot shots, a blink in, a couple more right clicks. And uh, this Queen of Pain is just getting too much. That's already two kill on the Queen of Pain. If we fast for a couple minutes more, she's gonna go back. By the way, they saw her going back, right? They had a ward there, so immediately they're doing the correct thing, which is trying to push. Unfortunately, they don't see these guys coming under a smoke. Again, rich enough to buy boots and a smoke. We're gonna see Queen of Pain teleporting back in, and it's gonna look really, really ugly. Kaboo's gonna go for go. Oh, they're gonna go for a dying Sonic Wave. Only gonna hit a single hero. That's one kill for Queen of Pain. How is gonna go for Funic next or Feed? Again, Blink with Max Queen of Pain. One more kill. That's a four kills for a uh, solo Queen of Pain. And Goblin gets Spiral Strike. That's gonna be the fifth kill for How. Look at the gold difference. Doubling the gold almost of the highest farmer on the Radiant side. When your trialing fails and fails this hard, the game is pretty much over. Now, I thought the replay, Luminous, or the topic for today is how do you rescue these failed trialings? Well, let me tell you that they're just, they are just so far behind. They're so far behind that there's no, no, no amount of rescue that you could, you know, get yourself back. Because this Queen of Pain is just fed so much that Queen of Pain is one of the best hero to ride this kind of momentum. But that's okay. We got a couple more replays to go. Next replay we're also going to watch is another failed trialing. And this is from LGD versus Absolute Legend. Now, as this replay is loaded up, this will be a very, very good time for me to tell you about stories. Story time. So earlier I talked about ice cream, right? So uh, this Saturday, my on my birthday, my friend took me out to ice cream parlor. Baskin Robinsons is is the place. And if you ever went to Baskin Robinsons or any actually ice cream parlor, you stand in front of this like big refrigerator, right? And then there's like these square sections with all the different ice creams. Now, I love ice cream. Like, I have a whole bunch of different flavors. Suppose you're in my shoes, but instead of loving ice cream, you hate ice cream, right? I know that's that's a different difficult thing to imagine because who hates ice cream? But imagine you hate ice cream. You're in my position. Your friend is treating out uh, on your birthday for some ice cream. And you have to decide on a flavor, right? So what do you decide? Oh, there's strawberries. You don't really like that. There's mango, um, chocolate, vanilla, right? So who the hell hates ice cream? I know that. Is let's just let's just let's just go with the story here. If you don't like ice cream. You have to pick. You have to pick a flavor, right? I'm gonna go say that even though you you hate ice cream to the gut, having option, having the ability to pick what you hate, is still good. Not having the option to pick what you hate is bad. Now that makes no sense, but as soon as we toss it into Dota context, we'll make a lot of sense. So let's jump into replay. This is LGD versus. Ooh, let me. 
Alright, so I know that story makes very little sense for time now. Which is the story is if you hate something, why is having the option to choose between something you hate a good thing? Right. Now remember before I show you the first replay, I quickly talked about um, the difference between a true trialing when you have actual three heroes in the lane and a a 2.5 lane, right? Quote unquote 2.5 lane. When you have a jungler, which is we have a jungler here? No, we don't. We don't have a jungler here. Um, when you have a jungler plus a dual lane, right? What we saw last game was the Sand King and the Shrek being the dual lane and Chen coming out of jungle. That was the 2.5 lane. When you have a legitimate trial lane, it is like you being in an ice cream parlor. You hate ice cream, but you have to pick one. That's what a trial lane is. Because remember what I say, a trial lane is designed to kill very, very quickly or push down towers very, very quickly. But the moment that you can't do that anymore, right? When you can't kill, when you can't push as a trial lane, what are you actually doing? You are actually in an ice cream parlor trying to choose a flavor. Or no, you are in an ice cream parlor and, and the dude gives you a flavor that you just absolutely hate. That is what's happening right now. But if you're in a 2.5 trialing and you're trying to you know, do whatever you, you want, you can't actually gank because you know, let's say you're playing against a Queen of Pain or Morphling, they're blinking away, you know, you can't really kill them. You can't really push against this tower because he has some kind of AOE mechanism, AOE machine counter pushing tool so you can't kill you can't push as a 2.5 lane you're actually not losing the lane because you have options right you have the option between choosing a mango flavor ice cream or a strawberry flavor ice cream sure you hate those two but you still get to choose right you have the option to still go force to push a tower it might not work well but you have the option to force to push a tower or you have the option to have your jungler go back in the jungle and keep on farming that's fine sure I know you want a tier 1 tower perhaps you want a tier 2 tower but you're not forced into doing so. And that's a big difference I want to make, especially in this replay. Back in last game, we saw Undying, uh, Venomancer, and, and Keeper of the Light. Well, they can't jungle because Venomancer and Kato can't. They can't gank, right? I remember making this point very, very strong. Keeper of the Light is a poor ganker, especially level 2. Venomancer, level 1 without boots, not the best ganker either. So if they don't win a trialing flat, they have no option. You are stuck in that ice cream parlor and he's handling you, I don't know, mint and you hate mint, right? Whereas in that last situation, remember Lashrak sanking Chen against the sour? Let's say they couldn't push it higher. Well, Chen could have just farmed here, right? Hey, you really hate mango to the guts? Well, strawberry's not so bad. That's kind of the point that I'm trying to make here. Now in this situation, it is Silar versus a tri lane, but there's a first blood attempt. They smoked around. Uh, it wasn't too important. Watch. They smoked around and got a first blood. No big deal. And these two guys, seeing the enemy tri lane here, is going to be immediately going into the bot lane to help out this Broodmother. This is a fairly awkward game because generally you don't see a Broodmother tri lane, but this is the, one of the few times you do. Now, again, this is not going to be played as a true tri lane, at least not for LGD. Because LG has the access into the jungle, if it's not ward off, they will have access to the jungle and you can definitely do the pull. Or, because Sand King and Rubik are very, very powerful gankers, they have the ability to leave the lane and go for a gank. Meanwhile, if you look at the enemy trialing here, it's a legitimate full trialing. Ben Master drop off a gale, no big deal. Nice pickup here, and Burrow Strike on too, so nobody, a whole bunch of spells being traded off, nobody, nobody's gonna die. If you look at the gankers on the AL side, it's a Latrac. Which is not the best ganker because he really needs a setup stun and mid lane doesn't have a setup stun hero, at least not on his team. And the same thing with Venmaster. He again he could go in with a Gale, but without boots of speed at level very low level is not gonna be effective. And you can see again, LGD is the guy that's in the ice cream parlor that has the option to choose between strawberry and mango, even though he doesn't like really both of them. What he really likes is killing everybody here. Um, whereas this guy here, he hates ice cream. And he's forced to eat ice cream. He's forced to push. He's forced to kill Brood. And they're not getting anything done because it's a Brood Mother. You're not really effectively going to push uh, unless you kill him. And here we go. Sand King picks up an Invis Rune. He's, he has the option to leave the lane. And uh, granted, this is supposedly seen because there's a Observer War being placed on the Dire side. But they're, for whatever reason, Shatan was not paying attention. And Shatan is going to get picked off. Burrow Strike. 
That's another kill. Now our tri lane or our 2.5 lane or more legitimately called a dual lane is handling the bot. I mean, they're handling against the heroes. Brewmother, very, very defensive hero. Rubik, very defensive in nature as well. It doesn't sound like it, but telekinesis against tri lane is legitimate. You're doing an AoE stun, and of course, Fable, making them lose attack damage, is pretty big as well. Now, we are three minutes in the game, so I want to pause this right now and look at how much gold we have earned. Dragonite's leading the way, that's in the mid lane, no big deal. Women is leading the way, no big deal. A roaming freaking Sand King, because of the assists he's got so far, has already boots, leading the game. And look at Morphling and Brewmother, right? Neck and neck in terms of farm. That might not be too surprising until you think, oh, we have three hero here. Shouldn't we be poning this Brewmother? Like, we even got Century Wars. Shouldn't we be leading the farm chart by a huge amount? Again, trialing that actually doesn't kill is a trialing that does very, very little. If you look at the CS comparison, Morphling's leading by two CS, and that's really not what you want three minutes in. Which, by the way, a very, very humorous moment. I want to actually go back and look at this moment with you guys. <laughs> he dropped the bottle to bottle crow, and then Tinker just <laughs> walked up to him and, and saw his bottle and shouted, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, in any case... Sanking continue to roam. Yeah, and this is a this is a very very passive game, in the sense that there's not many kills, and there's not much action happening on the scoreboard. But when there's very very little action happening on the scoreboard, if you're if you're on the trialing, if you're piloting the trialing and you don't see text popping up in this this vicinity of the map, you're in big trouble. You want to see text happening here. What is? Oh, we killed the hero. Oh, we pushed down on tower. You need to see that line of text all the freaking time, and because Absolute Legend not seeing right now, they're in deep trouble. They're in deep trouble. We're gonna see Sanking doing yet another roaming gank. Oh, it's gonna secure the regen root. Yep, very very nice. And then now we have Sanking backstabbing Musica on the top lane. Nice burrow, uh, burrow strike, shackle shot. Yep, the Sanking is really just hurting the hell out of this lane again. Why don't you say, well, why don't Beatus start ganking up? Again, he can't. He's a Venom Master. We're level 3, no boots. Very, very slow. The Shrek, not the best ganker. They really just want to kill Brood. But they can't kill Brood. Now, Brood eventually will play very, very aggressive and die. And I want to actually go to that point in game when that actually happens. So Ring's picked up. So he's actually seeing Beatus very, very low. And his spilings are coming in, and Silas says, oh man, I could get a kill. He's going to pop a soul ring for mana, and spawn spiraling. There you go. Unfortunately, yeah, they don't mess around. They're going to drop every single spell for Silas, and they do pick him down. Okay, finally, five and a half minutes in, Brewmother dies after getting a kill against the trialing. Okay, if we're looking at Go Earn so far, we do see Morphling spiking ahead a little bit because he just got the kill, or he got the assist go for the kill. He's going to spike ahead a little bit in terms of CS compared to the Brood as well. But for the most part, if you ask anybody, if you ask the absolute legend guy, I think this trialing has already failed. Again, ideally you want a tower at least 2 minutes into the game, perhaps 2.5 minutes in the game, or you want to get a lot of kills. And because they're doing neither, well this trialing is, is failed. Again, isn't the topic today about rescuing those failed trialings? What should you do in this kind of situation? Well, one of the more important things that you want to do is start to leave this lane. You really want to leave this lane. Uh, cut your losses. Just put one person here to handle the Broodmother and hope she doesn't kill you too much. And your other hero, two heroes, just go lane somewhere else. Um, do a three-man roaming gang party if you want. Like, anything but staying in the lane. Because staying in the lane is, is a losing proposition. If you can't beat them, when everybody's, you know, when you're an even footing, how are you going to beat them when they're up a level against you and they're up like 200 gold against you, right? It, it just mathematically makes very, very little sense. Again, the Sanking just doing so much. Shatan is going to get picked off. Can we drop off the laser? Ooh, he did not drop the laser. Uh, Shao, uh, Didi is going to die here, but no big deal. I'm not going to see him die. He plays so well. Okay, he didn't die. All right. <laughs> the last part. The last part of the replay, which is the really the, the meat of today's lesson, is how do you rescue those trialing? And when we're when we're rescuing trialings, we are gonna look at Zenith. I'm just reading some of the older chat. No, I'm not sponsored by Apple. I wish I was sponsored by Apple. Man, freaking won't look at don't even want to sponsor me, so. Okay, let's let's skip a little bit ahead. And hopefully we won't crash the freaking replay. Here we go, here we go. 
All right, we're two minutes in the game, no big deal. All right, let's quickly look at our, our hero trial lane, right? This is the trial lane we're looking at. This is the full legitimate trial lane. And let me tell you, two and a half minutes in, they have not killed Jack squad. <laughs> the score is 2-2. Two two. Miracle, who is generally the hard support player for uh, for CLG, one of my favorite players of all time. One of my favorite players. He's a player that I really want to aspire to be. He plays support really well, but could play all the roles, other roles as well. Uh, but unfortunately, Miracle or not, they're kind of getting their butt worked. This defensive trialing, right? This this defensive trialing, again, they have options. They could go in the jungle and pull, and you did just see them do that. Uh, and, and nice rewarding here being done, so they could get the pool. Meanwhile, this trialing, well, what do you do with a freaking nice stalker, crystal maiden, and windrunner? I guess you could set up ganks, that isn't the worst option. Uh, but for the most part, they're kind of just chilling here and going for this trialing. Now, this is not really a, just a trialing versus trialing situation. What complicates matters even more so is the fact that there is a profit being played by Loda on the top lane. Who could, at any time, just TP right in. So instead of a 3v3 engagement, you're basically fighting 3v4. You know, when it matters. When the gank happens, you're fighting 3v4. So uh, I can see why CLG is having such a tough time getting any type of kills. And Ice Ice Ice, not the best CS actually. But you know, Nice Soccer is not too good either. Nobody in this lane is going to have good CS. And that's kind of the unfortunate aspect. You know, we have Misery being checked up on top lane. You can see, again, the options when you play a defensive tri lane, you could leave and go gank. Shaker, one of the best gankers. You know, these two guys are going to fight over Hastrun. Aki with Hastrun, yes! What is she going to do? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. In fact, with the Hastrun, she's going to get outworked by Ice, Ice, Ice. Oh, there's a bite. There's a Nova. Ice is like, okay, I'll still hit you. Aggie's like, okay, well, I actually can't do anything. Get him back up. So sad. You pick up one of the best three in the game and you have to run away with it. The life of a crystal man. The life of a crystal man. All right, don't worry, CLG's like, you know what? We need to do something soon. Again, the magic number is the three minute mark. Three minute mark, let's see what we have done so far. Oh, yeah, nobody has farmed. At the very least, right? They're keeping Spectre down from farming. So that's not so bad. And, you know, it's a trialing versus trialing situation half the time. You know, Shaker's now coming back. So, neither trial has actually done anything, but action will start right now, and it's going to turn very, very ugly for CLG. Now again, keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of TP, and there's going to be a couple of nukes. Nice two-man shackle shot, but defensive fissure, illuminate on two, and suddenly we're going to see a teleportation coming in. Miracle running away with very low HP. They're going to try to bring down Miracle immediate south here, and here we go, TP in from the Tinker on the mid lane. Rocket's going to get a kill on the Windrunner. And meanwhile, this guy is going to basically feed to the neutral. Unfortunately, he can't feed it to neutrals because Spectral Dagger is going to get a kill here. Aki trying to run away. Fissure cools down. A couple more right clicks from HYHY. So in the span of 30 seconds, our trial lane just got work big time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 23 of the Delta Show where we learn how to try to rescue failed trial lanes. And this is a replay where we do so. Okay, so let's identify the problem of a failed trialing from the previous two we watched, right? In the first game, we saw that if you fail in trialing, you're going to be under level, you're going to be under farm, and more than likely, there's going to be a very, very farm member on the other team, right? So you basically can't come back. Remember that big queen of pain? That's a big problem. In the second game, what we learned from that is, well, the second game was more of the same thing, but instead of a, a queen of pain getting really, really farm, it was a sand king getting, getting uh, really, really farm. And for the most part, it's very difficult to to win, uh, to, to make a comeback. And we're going to see CLG make that type of comeback. We're six minutes in the game, and this is a very, very important time for CLG. Because the first Nightfall just happened. Night Stalker, unfortunately, though, only four and a half level. Also, the six minute, the first Nightfall, is also means that the enemy wards will be running out very, very soon. You can see that this ward is you know, almost done. The river war has already ran out. So this is the prime time for... Uh, nice Stalker to actually go up to gank real fast. 
I just said, you know, if you're failing the trialing, you should actually start leaving the trialing, right? CLG will be leaving the trialing, but women just picked up a double damage. So they're like, you know what, with the DD, let's try something. Let's make sure we can, you know, get a kill. Unfortunately, very, very good position from Spectre. Of course, has support my shield. <laughs> Come at me, bro. He knows he's safe. He knows he has profit TP. He knows that Shaker's coming nearby. So really, there's no way for Miracle and his squad to actually get this kill. In fact, they should be very careful. It is Nightfall now. That means the vision for CLG is going to be lower, at least for these two heroes. And that means we can actually come in uh, and gank them if you're uh, the Radiant side. And that's exactly what we'll see uh, from Loda. Loda is suddenly going to TP behind. There's a TP from Loda. The Sprout comes in right now. Whole bunch of spell being traded. Meet a Tango from Miracle. No one actually ended up dying. No big deal, Loda says. I'll just TP back. Buys a TP and goes right back. So now, 7 minutes in the game. It is time to start ganking. If you want to keep going back to this lane, you're done. Because you're down by at least one level on each of your heroes. So effectively, you're down three levels in the lane. That is not the best way to go about it. It's like, okay, fine, let's leave the lane. We're going to leave one dude back to defend the tower, which one is not a bad way to go about it. Immediately, they're going to gank mid. And this is rather one of the easiest gank. Tower not focusing on the Crystal Maiden. You can see Mirko, such good play. Let, let's just watch that one more time, right? Most nice stalker after that gank. Well, we're, we we go win back a little bit too too quick, but we'll, we'll AX speed through that one. All right, here we go. Here's the gank coming. So, of course, Aki is just tanking the tower like crazy. Tank the rocket as well. There's a tower. Very, very low. Most nice stalker, which is like, oh, yeah, let's go home and run out. Tanking the tower shots for Aki. Very, very, very big play, right? You can't lose any extra kills. Gonna earn his teammates. Now, this is a very, very important thing I want to point out as well. Mirko, extremely, extremely low in this HP. Has, like, you know, no items. Generally, this is the time to go back to base. Instead of going back to base, he's earning himself up. Now, you might be saying, well, isn't that such a normal play? Well, not for Nice Sucker. That last charge of your urn is oftentimes the actually the urn charge you need to get kills. So a lot of nice locker would actually hold on to the last urn charge, even you know instead of healing themselves, they rather hold on to that urn charge. But right now, Miracle says, forget that last urn charge. I'm gonna heal myself because I cannot go back. Right now, effectively, our team is down by. Well, let's check out hero levels. Their team is down by a whole bunch of levels. For the most part, Radiant's leading. I know Lycan's leading entirely the chart, but. On average, um, Radiant is uh, leading in terms of levels. And you can't go back to base because you're not getting any levels. You can see instead he's picking up a Boots of Speed, a Magic Swan, and a uh, and a Healing Self. This is for uh, the Lycanthrope, so it's not his. So he's like, you know what? I'll use the last Earn Charge, and I'm going to bring myself a Self and uh, try to get any type of EXP uh, by ganks and, and staying in lane. And that's I, I cannot stress that point enough. If you're losing tri lanes, if you're down in terms of kills, try to limit your trips back to the fountain. Instead of getting things like a tele instead of running back to base and teleporting back, just fear yourself a salve and a clarity. That's 135. Well, that's 150 gold compared to the 135 of teleport scroll you used to spend, right? Sure, the healing comes a little bit later, and you might in theory, you know, go down in, in during that time when you're waiting for a salve and a clarity to be delivered to you. But the upside of it is absolutely huge. You get to stay in lane, you get to get EXP, and you get to do what Miracle is doing right now, which is ganking very, very offensively. He ran past by a ward here, and you can see that now Loda will have very, very good map awareness. Gonna send one of his to, to go check out. Unfortunately, you know, you can see Nice Docker coming, but Miracle says, I don't really give a damn. And of course, PyCat with his wolf form, they're gonna go for Loda. And Loda is going to immediately go down. Aki, unfortunately, nobody to tank for him this time. The Luminate is going to bring him down. PyCat's going to run out because he has 522 movement speed. Miracle getting a little bit of tree and pat block. Nice micro by Loda, but not enough. So you might be saying, what is that big deal, right? Didn't we just trade one for one right there? Going to pause and, and do a little bit of math. Now, I know you guys are not really big on math, but I am pretty big on math. Okay. Um, in this situation, let's say you're down by four kills, right? You're down by four kills. If you're down zero to four, if you're zero and the enemy four, you're down by a hundred percent, right? You have no kills, they have four. If you're down by one and five, you have twenty percent of the enemy's kill. You see where I'm going with this? If the score is two to four, you're still down by four kills, but now you're you have like what, twenty-four percent, twenty-six percent of the enemy's kill. Let's go to the extreme spectrum here. 
let's say you have a really really long Dota game. The enemy team has 100 kills, you have 96 kills. You're still down by 4 kills, right? But really you're down, you're down by less and less amount of kills percentage wise if the, if, if the gap... Okay, this is a very important concept so let me... Mr. Okay, one more time. If you're trading kills, that's a good thing. If you're trading kills, that's an exceptional thing, especially if you're behind, because percentage-wise, you're catching up. And that's a big thing, especially in a situation like this, where Miracle just lost his... Well, he didn't, it's not his fault, but they just lost their trialing, but they're ganking their way back. And sometimes when you gank, you know, they kill you back too. A one-for-one -one trade is always, always positive, percentage-wise, you're getting an advantage. Where they're so small it is, you know, you're you're increasing your, your, your ratio, your kill ratio by 2%, 4%. But you're catching up, and that's a big thing. And when you're losing, it's all about catching up. Pycat's gonna be hit, pick off here, unfortunately. But a big team fry is gonna break out. Tornado's gonna pick him in there. Miracle's gonna be backstabbing. There's the earn charge being used for HYHY. He's gonna pick off. He's gonna run through all the uh, marching machine. Meanwhile, Shaker gets picked off. So that's a two for one trade. That's not even an even trade. So right now CLG is coming back. Let's for a moment go back and, and, and think about that even trade that we had. It was a one for one trade. You guys now understand that mathematically it's still in your favor to do one for one trades. But you gotta keep in mind, we lost a Crystal Maiden. I'm sorry, Aki, but you know, you're playing Crystal Maiden. We lost a Crystal Maiden for a freaking Lotus Profit. That's always a good trade in my book. And right, just right now we traded a, a Lycan, which is, you know, pretty bad. Unfortunately for us, uh, well, although he's headless, so maybe he's worth it. Uh, we trade a headless Lycan for an Earthshaker and a Tinker. Again, a pretty advantageous trade, if I may add. Uh, if I may add, again, it's a two for one. You are making a significant le leap. So we started in this game zero and three. Now five to four. CLG is slowly coming back in the game. You're not gonna have an instant comeback. It's very, very rare that. You go 0-3 in a trial lane and you all three go back and kill them all back. You know, and then you suddenly have a score of 3-3. That rarely, rarely happens. But what good team really forces out is these one kill advantage, you know. Hey, Crystal Maiden and Nice Darker Gang mid for a Tinker one kill. Hey, let's do a one for one trade here. Again, getting small incremental advantages. And now we're gonna have Pycat picking up the Aegis. So So you're down a kill, but you're actually up an Aegis, so effectively. You're on an even footing, and CLG. This is how they begin, uh, begun their massive comeback, and they do eventually win this game and win this entire series. Uh, so very, very well played for CLG. Now, if you haven't watched yesterday's episode of um, Done by LD, LD was really focusing on Earthshaker and what to do on early, uh, early stages of Earthshaker play. One of the key things that he stressed out when you're playing Earthshaker is that when you're losing the lane, get the hell out. Make sure you don't lose even more so. And that's also the crux of today's lesson. Hey, they kind of match. Is it a coincidence? It wasn't. It was It was planned, right? LD, one important lesson that we point out, whether you're a beginner level player, if you're losing lane, if you can't do too much as a support, try to gank the other lanes, you know? That's more effective use of your time than sitting here on the lane that you're really losing and looking pretty because you're, you're going to get killed. Same thing here on the low level to the highest level of play from CLG. If you're losing lane, just gank mid, just gank the other lane, dive up top, you're a nice locker, just use all that advantage you have and get a lot of kills. So what we learned here today is when you're losing a trial lane, first of all, try not to lose it. Especially when you're playing a trial lane, look at the game clock, it happens so very fast. Three minutes of laning time, that's like, you know, six wave of creeps, that's really, really fast. Just ask yourself at, at the three minute mark, am I winning this lane? And what I ca what I mean by winning this lane is I'm I destroyed their tier one tower where I killed their heroes two or three times in the lane. If you have done that, great job, you're winning the lane. If you have not done that by the three minute mark, ask yourself what else can I do? Can I gank mid? Can I get a TP scroll and gank bot? Can I buy a smoke and do a two main gank? There's a lot of options, but you have to find those options. And again, if you don't have those options, you are that dude at the ice cream parlor. You're gonna you, you're getting mango stuffed down your throat. That's a very interesting imagery. And now lastly, what we saw from CLG was exactly what we should be doing the entire time. If we're losing a lane, just go gank. Just go gank. We saw great dives from Miracle on the mid lane as well as the top lane. Great play by using his urn but not going back to the base. Also, key thing, don't go back to the base if you can help it. Send yourself selves. Send yourself clarities. That's what the chicken's for. And uh, 
hopefully going to make some comebacks in your public games after this broadcast of Learning with Lumi series. All right, we are done with today's episode. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. I do apologize for the technical difficulties in the middle, but for the most part, I thought today was pretty good. Pretty good. Tomorrow's episode is going to be back on... Tomorrow's episode is going to be back on LD Dota at Twitch TV. He's going to be looking at a very specific hero from his point of view and teach you guys uh, how to play. I don't know exactly what the hero is going to be about, but I do know that it's going to be a very hero specific episode. I believe it might be Spectre. No, Spectre was last week, so I'm not too sure. Right? Any specific questions about what I've talked about today? No questions. I, I'm all good. I'm happy about no questions. That means I did an excellent job, right? Presenting my topic? I'm not sure about that. Alright, no questions. Well, this is sort of related. Lumi, uh, this is from Buggy Uggy. Loda, you said Mergo is one of your favorite players of all time. I like him as well. What do you think about Loda? I feel like Loda is such a really, really powerful, um, versatile player. I know he a lot of times he only plays a carrier or a silent farmer, but I've seen him play support as well, and he does it very decently. Um, he's a very big variant player, especially back in those days in CLG. Either in some games he does very, very well, or in some games he, he doesn't do that well. And that has always happened throughout Loda's history as a Dota player. Like, he has a big variance. And I'm not sure if that's a good quality or bad quality. Like, you have some good days, you have some bad days. Uh, but he's not too consistent as a player, I want to say. So that's that's kind of my thought on him. But, you know, I sure I, I hope that Loda don't take too, too much offense into what I said. Um, this is just based on the replays I have seen. So he definitely knows himself a lot better than I do. Any more questions? Ah, this is a very, very good question. Pingu Frosty asks, if you push down tier 1 tower with a tri lane and get no hero kills, is that good? Yeah, that's really, really good. Because effectively, you have gained your entire team 1,000 gold. Just, just forget about the other lanes, right? You just gave your team 600 extra gold. Can you imagine what you could do with 600 extra gold? just for your team, you could just effectively stay in that lane, right? Just sit, keep staying in that lane, but you now have 600 more gold to work with. You don't have to actually kill heroes, and I think that that's what, like, a big part of the European metagame right now is, is so many tower pushing and very, so very little hero killing, because hero killing is actually not that big of a deal. Now, if you kill a hero and then push a tower, you're golden, but if you just push a tower, you're still very, very far ahead, and that cannot be, uh, that cannot be stressed upon even more so. Um, Rainmaster asks, and this is referred to what I said earlier. I said, if, you, if you're losing a lane, just keep one person back, send a couple others out to gank, and uh, you know, hope for the best, right? He asks, you know, what if you leave the lane and the person you left behind dies even more so? While well, you're kind of in trouble, the person that you're leaving behind generally should just tower hug. He should just get EXP. Now, remember the, uh, the in game number two, what we saw the hero being left behind was the Windrunner, right? That was a very, very good example of the hero being left back. Great hero to survive, could power shot to spam, prevent the tower from being pushed down. The hero that we saw being left back here was a... It wasn't a Crystal Maiden. I know Crystal Maiden and Miracle was ganking around quite a bit. I believe it was... Let me quickly go back in the game and look it up. Ah, it was, it was also a Windrunner here. It was... Yeah, it was also a windrunner here, so both teams decide to leave the windrunner behind. Again, a very, very powerful choice of a hero to leave him back because power shot, windrunner. So it sucks if your hero that you're leaving behind is dying, but you know, make the best strategical choice. Leave it behind that has the highest chance of surviving. Yeah. Okay, I think that's going to do it for the question. Thank you guys for tuning in. Tomorrow is going to be a Twitch TV slash LD Dota. He's going to be talking about a specific hero. I'm not sure. Uh, what that specific hero might be. Also, follow me on Twitter at Luminous Inverse with no T. Luminous Inverse. 
And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, until Thursday, uh, this is Loomis signing off. Cheers, guys.